um, we had a couple more questions. One of them is on toilet training. So I'm working on toileting initiation with a client. So he's been taken on a two hour schedule, which prevented most accidents, but he was being asked every hour. So they changed that and they now they present the visual that says I need the bathroom. So he says that as he's going to the bathroom and they have a highly preferred snack that he only gets when going to the bathroom. They see random bowel movement accidents, but no urine accidents, but there's still no independent demands for the bathroom. Any other ideas for transitioning away from a schedule and initiating? Yes, we do. Um, so the first thing is you need to start fading the reinforcement for elimination and start reinforcing the initiation. Um, so there are some multiple ways to do it. One of them is to have a timer going so that he's responding to the timer and then the timer prompts him to initiate even if it's, even if it's supported, um, even if the, time, the timer goes off and then he you know, learns to pair those two, but then eventually fading the timer um, and then reinforcing the initiation. So reinforcing whether it's an exchange of the picture or him saying I need to go to the bathroom um, so that eventually you're not prompting him at all. And then he's starting to learn to respond um, to his body. So you're basically gonna be fading the interval system totally. Um, but I think using some reinforcement first to shape that initiation versus shaping the elimination. Shane, anybody who's had that? Yeah, I just typed something into the chat. It's called a watch minder. I'm not sure if anyone's heard of it, um, but Shira was talking about teaching someone to respond to a timer. Um, it can even be a, you know, a vibrating timer. Um, there's something called a watch minder that's actually a watch and it vibrate. You can set the timer, it can vibrate and it can come up with words. So if the student is able to read, it can actually come up with words. And what I would do is program in something like, I need to use the washroom or bathroom, I guess. I need to use the bathroom or excuse me, I need to whatever is age appropriate um, and have him say that comment. So, you know, the vibration goes off, he looks at it and it says, I need to use the bathroom. You know, he says it to somebody, he says, excuse me, I need to use the bathroom. And then he goes and he goes to the bathroom. And then eventually that can be faded. Um, I like what Shira said about that reinforcement because oftentimes, you know, we're like, hey, great job, you eliminated on the toilet or hey, great job, you initiated and eliminated on the toilet. You know, here's your reward that I've been using for toilet training and you get it as soon as you leave the bathroom. Look at where you're giving that reward. And instead, as soon as he says on his watch minder, hey, I need to use the toilet. Um, that's when you, hey, I really love the way you asked here. I love the way that you said that yourself here. Um, and the other key point that Shira said was really changing the way, like when you are taking a learner to the washroom, um, instead of saying, do you need to go to the bathroom, right? And the student says yes or no, or if you, know, the, if you say it's time to go to the bathroom, they're still not learning, right? So, but if you, you show them a picture, or you show them a text cue or give them a verbal model that says, say, I need to go to the bathroom. And then they say it, then you can reinforce for that prompted request um, and go from there. Also, I find that people um, very subconsciously, like even though we say that they initiated, if they exchange the picture, I find that a lot of people still like, you know, nudge them up or say like, okay, let's go. Or like prompt them in the direction of the bathroom. And I think being aware of those little prompts that we're giving them. And if you can get them to the point where they're just exchanging or saying, I need the bathroom and you just say, okay. And see if they could then get themselves up, find the bathroom, that's a big part of initiation. So even though they're exchanging the picture, are you then taking their hands and walking them to the bathroom? Or are you just saying, okay, go. And they're able to get themselves up and find the bathroom. So that's a big part of it too. And these are all steps. Like you wouldn't do this all at once, but you'd have to figure out where they are in this chain and you know shape closer approximations to that independent skill of staying in the bathroom, getting themselves up and walking to the bathroom. Um, and then deciding where in that point you want to reinforce. Are you reinforcing the exchange? Are you reinforcing them getting up? Are you reinforcing them getting themselves to the bathroom? Um, that may change as well. And I've had a lot of success with that, that watch that, that, you've, that you gave the example of. Um, I find that especially for kids that may have physiological issues where they may not learn to feel that because of whatever other issues are going on, then that could just be something that they use. Um, so it's, it's a really great tool called the watch finder it's yeah it's really really great 